Hi, I'm Matt Widgery from mattwidgery.com and I'm here with David Bradley who is a fantastic photographer, he's an author, he's a scientist, he's a musician, he's all sorts of clever things. Well, it's all the same, it's all stuff, isn't it? It's just, <laughs> it's just making stuff, writing stuff and taking photographs and singing a bit, yeah. But yeah. Nice, I like that, it's all stuff, it's I stuff, like that, yeah. yeah, we like stuff. So, um, David is here because he got in contact recently, he's looking at changing his Canon 20D That's and right, looking cool. at yeah. something uh, a little bit more modern. Um, so what we're now looking at, because um, he may still go down the Canon route and buy something a bit more modern, like a 6D or something like that. However, I thought I'd throw him a bit of a curveball. As you th have been watching the channel know, uh, I've been making this transition from DSLR to mirrorless, and I've been using the Fuji X-Pro1. So I thought we'd come out here, get David to have a little bit of a play with the camera and see what he thinks about it. So we're going to go off and do some photos, but I just wanted to grab David with a few words just because we've been holding it for a couple of seconds. Just get your initial thoughts about holding the camera and what you think. It feels alien. It looks very, very old fashioned and in a nice way. It looks like a proper old camera, um, but it certainly feels alien having been with a, a 20D, you know, very old um, Canon digital there for a, for a long time, 10 years or so. But I am intrigued as to what this is going, how this is going to perform, and what it what it'll be like to you know in terms of quality. And we're not going to really test the ISO out. I wouldn't have thought in this sunlight, but no. <laughs> but but every but everything else we can test the speed and depth of field and all the usual uh, things. So that's uh, I'm very interested to give it a go. Brilliant stuff. Right. So let's get out there and take some pictures, and uh, we shall uh, see how David gets on. It is a steep learning curve, like you said. Yeah. And finding that button. Yes. Finding the shutter button is, uh, if you take your finger off it and you move angle or you change your hand, you think, oh, where's it gone again? And so it's. Uh, yeah, there's two but things. I think that's with every camera. I think it is to a certain extent. Camera, you, you you have to find the controls where the. The Where button the I find the most difficult to, to find on those is that back button focus because it's very yeah. smooth and shiny, and you can't really feel it, and it's not where a human being's thumb would ever move naturally. Well, no, you want you want that grip with your your thumb up there on on the wheel almost, don't you? So the yeah, you do. So that yeah. back button focus there. If I move the thing out of the way, you're holding it like this. You've got to then move your thumb there, which then feels like you you're almost letting go of the camera. Yeah, exactly. Although yeah. you obviously got a grip on the the underside of the lens, as all professionals do. So yeah, you so do. You're fine, really. But you're not going to drop it, but it's, no. it's finding it, hunting it out, and, and without looking while you're facing into the into the viewfinder rather yeah. than doing it like the uh, you know, I'm the almost screen. there with that now I, I it, because it's natural yeah. to me but it, it, it was it was not count, it was not intuitive when I when I first started I found that I, th I think yeah it, the intuitiveness of, of any of them is probably boils down to, to use doesn't it you want yeah. you, once you've had a go and you said you know, yeah. used it for several weeks now that's and, it yeah and find everything and know everything and know all the where everything is I'm still thinking well where's the button to look at the pictures oh there it is it's, yeah yeah so that's even it. that's not in the right <laughs> in the right place yeah yeah because it's say, not so. where the, it was on the Canon so it's exactly. like yeah. <laughs> and, and the little compact cameras all have they all have the same sort of set of little one there and you have to get your fingernail into it at least the yeah uh, are big enough to, to press but yeah that's smooth right. and shiny and you might press the wrong one and you think oh i've missed the shot cool so here are the pictures that uh, that we've been playing around with these are oh, look at these a handsome chap there there is a, it's oh, an this is what they call an action shot this is an action shot running running with the camera <laughs> <laughs> fantastic <laughs> and it's some strange one like a dance but um these are the this is the way that the the, the camera renders JPEGs. We're looking simply at the JPEGs as they've come out of the camera. Um, I've got it set up, I believe, to um, apply a Velvia. The, the nice thing about these okay. um, these, fil these Fuji films, obviously Fuji uh, film uh, made some of the really nicest looking professional film stock, you know, back in the day. And and so with these, you've got simulations for Velvia 
Provia Astia, depending on what type of. So you get that 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 um, that you know pro negative look that you got Excellent. from your old yeah. film stock. Yeah, that, so these very punchy colours that you're seeing from the JPEG file are because it's applying Velvia to that. Yeah, so and if you wanted to do something that was more like a, a soft portrait, like a family or wedding portrait, you can put on an Astia look or a Provia mm-hmm. look to give mm-hmm. you that softer skin tone. So this is what um, what Velvia looks like, and there's other other things that you can. It certainly with. has that rich that rich saturation without it being like a postcard I mean yeah the, yeah it doesn't look you get the overblown mm. glare of the colours this, mm. this looks really nice so I just wanted to zoom in on uh, on Rosie's eyes ah, yes there. this is this is our model I, for the day I think that's, yes I think this is the uh, have a kind of eye in there oh there it is there oh well that's not too bad is that's quite uh, quite highly zoomed that's, that's way over 100% zoom isn't it and if yeah. we get back to 100% zoom and I suspect it's it's more to do with where I actually pointed the camera to get the focus. So I mean, it's a nice it's a nice picture. I I I think you've you've done pretty well for the the, the first go with this. I found as um, you know, if you want to click on the screen now, guys, and have a look at the um, the video that I did from uh, uh, from from Goodwood, um, you can see the amount of, of missed focuses I got was a lot higher than what what Dave's been getting on that first day. <laughs> what's what's because, so far, yeah. <laughs> Um, you can see, I mean, that one, that one looks tacked. I mean, zoom on into that eye. Simply because the, the way that the autofocus um, works, as I explained in that video, is very, very different. Um, so, you know, there's a learning curve with it. There was. It's very much, a, it's very different. The buttons aren't anywhere where, or mostly not where you expect them. They're not doing the thing you expect them to no. do. They've got their perfect use and having the aperture ring and, and, the, and programming in the, uh, the, the shutter speed is, yeah. is fine. But it's a case of while you're trying to catch a picture of a dog running backwards and forwards at high speed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where did I press? Which one did I press? Hold on a minute. I haven't got the right button there. And, yeah. and adjustments are. Um, you need to take your time, I think, to learn. To yeah, learn you where do. You go. It's uh, it, it's um, it's sort of changing religion, isn't it? Completely. You, it you is. It is. Start from scratch. Yeah, and we we discussed uh, music a little bit earlier, and um, I think it's the, it's the difference between switching from the the rock guitar mm. to the to a, a classical guitar. Yeah. You. It's the same same six strings and a fretboard yeah. with something that makes a noise, but mm. your uh, your playing style is different. And it's it, completely different. Yeah, and, and I think it, holding a camera of this sort makes you think slightly different from what you normally do with an SLR. Mm. I don't know whether mm. whether what I'm producing here, the, these random shots of the dog, are any good. I don't think they're, they're, they're great shots, but it makes you think that you're doing something different because the camera feels so different there's a yeah. there's a certain um certain edge that's different from the the standard uh Canon SLR what what do you think the the, the main difference in terms of it, it it's it's handling and, and how that makes you make a shot what what do you think the sort of main difference is between taking if you if, what do you think the main difference was taking those shots with with this compared to taking it with your your 20D for example well, I would find if I was if I was shooting the dog in the field, running backwards and forwards as we did, I'd have her on on frame, so I'd be mm. taking five at a time right. of, of each shot just to get the one where the, the eyes and the ears are perfectly in focus right. because yeah, yeah. she's got <laughs> such expressive ears, mm. and all Labradors do. Um, we're losing the pictures here, um, but in this felt partly because I'm not used to it and haven't mm. used anything like it before. It it felt like I was having to really concentrate, but on the camera. Mm and not so much on the shot whereas I feel right. like because I'm fairly adept with a digital SLR or at least the Canon that I have mm. I just pick it up and automatically know what to do it gets out and of it's, way and it, yeah, it's a, it becomes a, a transparent rather than opaque mm. yeah. and I think yeah. that's really just the learning curve that we talked about earlier mm. I think it's it's just a case of if I had it for a week to play yeah. with and to try and to take some proper shots rather than test shots. I'm yeah. sure I'd I'd start to get the feel for it. It took me about a week um, coming coming from the Nikon's. And um, what's interesting is, I mean, I'm I'm a big uh, I'm a big camera nut, and I buy a lot of different cameras and old film cameras and things like that. And it, it probably took me longer as a learning curve to work that out than anything else. I mean, like even like going back and and like, like I've got old sort of t- TLRs and things yeah, like that yeah. and you know which use totally weird and different things and like they have kind of coupled aperture and, and, and shutter dials that do different things okay. obviously the viewfinder is different and you you pan the camera one way and the image goes the other way because there's no pentaprism to correct the image so it's okay. upside down and ask about no, right. face and stuff okay. like that okay. and even that I found was 
somehow easier. The, 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 the interesting thing about these, when, when, I, when I've got it nailed, and I think, I, you know, I don't know, I think I'm, 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 I'm there with it now in terms of knowing where all the buttons are and being able to access stuff quickly, mm. um, I, it, makes, it makes perfect sense in this kind of closed philosophy but you need to get into that circle first. Yeah. If you're outside it from a, a, a Nikon or a Canon world, um, it seems a bit bonkers the way the, yeah. the buttons are. So I think yeah. anybody considering looking at these things um, versus that even if, if they've been from a, from a DSLR or an SLR background before, or if they pick up an SLR and then pick up one of these and they want to see which one they want to shoot with, I would say that even a complete novice will pick up a DSLR, even quite a high-end one, and, mm-hmm. and, and learn it probably faster than they will with one of these. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it is a different thing. And I think that, you know, the pros and cons of the camera aside and the image quality aside, I think that that is something that, you know, people who are considering this system need to be aware of. Is it something they want to kind of budget to have the time to learn and really invest in to get the best out of it versus yeah. something where you can just pick it up and and, and, and go? That's right. Yeah, I, I find it, it's, it's sort of helped me focus in on the fact that I really should stick with the digital SLR Although this, you know, feels like a great camera, looks looks really um, great as well. And and as we're glancing through the pictures, it's mm. producing wonderful, crisp and rich photographs. Yeah. Um, the the aesthetics of the photographer aside, and um, it's, it's a pretty but, decent job for somebody that's just picking up. But and doing but, but I do, yeah. Well, that, that's flattering. But I I do think it's uh, it's gonna I'm gonna struggle to to switch from from ten years of using a, a digital SLR to a to this kind of camera. At the moment, mm. although maybe if, if I won the lottery, if I ended the lottery and won yeah. the lottery, I might buy one as well as a digital well, this is it. So this is it. If the money was no object, I'd have both and, yeah. and have a play with this. But I think the uh, it's a steep learning curve to climb. And if it is. You know, if it takes several weeks to get up there, I'm not sure I've got several weeks to, 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 to mess around, to invest. And I think this is it because, I mean, for me personally, um, I, I wanted, I, 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 I psychologically, I wanted to make the change. I, I've... Uh, a few years ago, I had a, a motorbike crash, and so one of my shoulders isn't so hot. Okay. And so, carrying a big camera bag around all day, you know, is, is pretty arduous. And, and so, I wanted a way of, of lightening the load um, to that extent as well. I also, um, I, I, I'm a, an aesthetic creature. I like to have nice looking things, and mm-hmm. that is so much prettier than my T300. It just is, yeah. um, you know. Um, so, so for me, all those things were a factor. Uh, the image quality is great. It's a lot better than than my D three hundred. Is it better than a modern D four S or um, or one DX? No, probably not. But it's up there, you know. And mm-hmm. for for all intents and purposes, it's certainly as I've um, sort of you know shown in different videos, you know, it's, it's up there in terms of being able to create you know a professional image for for clients and things like that that they would be you know very you know more than happy with um, you know from that point of view. But you know, and so although I'm sold on it, and I think that you know, there are a chance of people who are sold on it, and I think there will be more, and I hope there are more people that are sold on this. I think that it's a really useful thing to come out of this video that just because it's this sort of latest greatest thing that everybody seems to be talking about in, mm-hmm. in camera uh, in the camera world at the moment that everyone's going mirrorless. You know, I've seen articles that literally say the DSLR is dead. Yeah, you know, long live mirrorless, and, and and frankly it. They said the same thing about medium format when people started to go to 35 mil, mm-hmm. um, and you can still buy that. In 10 years' time, you're still going to be able to buy DSLRs. Mirrorless will come alongside it. They will take a bigger market share. Mm. But I think the important thing is that you've got to have a camera that feels comfortable so that, as you said, it's transparent, not opaque. That's right, yeah. That's a, really, it, that's a brilliant phrase. I mean, I really mm. like that mm. as a way to describe that because you need the camera to get out of your way when you're taking the picture. That's right, yeah. It's your eye, not the camera. You, the, the, um, the thing is you want, you want to capture what you see in your mind's eye and see with your eyes, and, and the camera is the tool, and the tool mm. isn't, you don't want the tool to be in the way no. of that process. Exactly, yeah, that's it. And, and you know, ultimately, um, and I just want everybody watching this to really sort of take this to heart, because, you know, um, obviously, you know, as photographers, we're, we're all gear addicts. We all love our, 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 you know, toys, and whether or not we're buying camera bodies or lenses <laughs> or tripods or lights or whatever it is, um, it's just cool to have. We just like doing it. That's right. But... You know, it is, it's it's that, you know, if you can see me there, it's the six inches behind the camera that's the important bit of the equation. And so, you know, nobody has ever, you know, asked, nobody ever asked William Shakespeare what kind of pen he used to write that's his right, place yeah. with, right? It's mm. just, you know, the tool is irrelevant, frankly. You know, so long as you've got something that, um, that, that does the job that you need it to do. And, okay, there are certain, uh, you know, if you're going to go and shoot sport, Perhaps you do need something that does 10 frames a second. If you're shooting a lot in low light, perhaps you do need a camera that's got the capability to 
you know capture pictures you know in in, in minimal light but you know for for, for the, the vast majority of, of normal shooting situations your Canon uh, 20D that's, mm-hmm. that's right. what seven ten, years old ten, ten, ten years, years old ish, yeah, yeah you know my date D300 not far off I think it's about 2007 mm-hmm. I forget now 2007 2008 same thing it's an old camera but you know I still produce images off that that are you know fantastically sharp and great images and, mm-hmm. and I've yeah. seen the images that you produced off your 20D and they're, they're fantastic and Thanks. you know it's, yeah. it's nothing to do with the camera it's to do with the photographer and, mm. yeah. uh, and, and what, it, what they're able to get out of the, the kit. Okay that's, uh, that's excellent it's been great fun to, uh, to try it out and it's a, it's a lovely little camera isn't it? It is a lovely little camera um, well I wish you good luck um, let us know how you get on with the decision making process oh, yes. and oh, um, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing what, what the results are I mean I, I, I know that uh, it's the, either either camera with Ego sixty or, or five D Mark three. They are belting cameras. I mean, they are they are really really cool. So um, you know, I think you'd be happy with either one. So Dave, thank you very much for joining me. Well, thank um, you for you guys at uh, at home watching this. Uh, please leave your comments in the box below and let us know if you have had experience with any of these cameras that we've been talking about. And if you've got any recommendations that Dave hasn't thought about, throw those in the comments uh, below. If you click on the box that's just appeared around that camera now, that's to allow you to subscribe to this channel so please do that because it really helps me out and I will see you again soon. Cheers!